is a um, parallel processed machine um, that has uh, very sophisticated algorithms running behind it. Um, it is given access to information, it's not got access to the internet or anything. Um, and it runs these algorithms to identify um, different concepts, uh, it understands language, um, so it's able to link different words and it has natural language processing built in. Um, and it's able to then go through all the information and the data that it's got access to. It looks for concepts. Based upon these algorithms, it starts to get some level of comprehension and understanding uh, as to the relevance of a particular fact or an answer to the question that has been asked. Um, and it's able to then give a confidence level to its findings. Well, Watson is a very, currently, it's a very um, customised technology. So, given that it's got learning associated with it, um, it, this is necessarily a feedback. And there's a, what, there's a period of, of what we call training for Watson, um, where it's, uh, it has access to the questions that experts are asked. It learns the answer, it starts to generate its own answers, it's uh, corrected uh, and taught by these experts. Um, and uh, that, that necessarily means that the answers and the way in which Watson works is reflective of the way in which it's been trained, which is therefore very specific to the applications that it currently has. So, um, in the future, I'm sure cognitive computing uh, and the application of natural language processing is going to become much, much more sophisticated. Um, and we think that something like Watson will have a major role to play in that widespread adoption. Absolutely. So healthcare is something that IBM is very focused on for, um, for the applications for, for Watson. We recognise that Watson's, uh, the capabilities and the technologies that we've developed under the umbrella of Watson are very advanced and the IBM's underlying um, uh, drive over its 100 year history has been to make the world a better place. It's a grand claim, but that's what it aims to do. Um, and we believe that Watson's a technology that can make the world a better place, and its application in healthcare is certainly something that um, will improve the lives of many people. It has the capability to do that. We're exploring a lot of different applications for it in healthcare, and uh, we're, we've got some very um, uh, high potential collaborations, high impact collaborations with uh, experts and uh, leading centres around the world to, to see what Watson's potential actually is. Yeah, so we've, um, we have a uh, collaboration with Memorial Sloan Kettering, one of the world's leading oncology um, treatment centres. Uh, recently a collaboration with Mayo Clinic around the um, selection of uh, patients for trials has been announced. Um, we are very uh, uh, interested in discussing applications of Watson. We have a, we have a specific set of instances of Watson um, for the pharmaceutical industry. Um, Discovery Advisor is a way in which um, We've uh, instantiated a lot of the uh, capabilities that Watson has to search for concepts um, and uh, it, it, we've used that on uh, these publication databases, so PubMed for example, with all the research papers. Uh, we've done projects around searching for genes um, and translating those into disease pathways. We've built a tool that allows the um, easy access and engagement of scientists um, with that capability. So we are actively investing and developing ways in which the, um, the capabilities can be deployed to pharma um, and we think that the impact on R&D in particular is going to be quite far reaching. We think it's going to be able to uh, reduce the time in early discovery as well as uh, increase the efficiency around clinical development. So we think the implications are quite far reaching.